Welcome to the Weight Loss for Women Over 50 Masterclass Series. I'm here today with Melanie Cohn. She is a weight loss coach, helping people lose weight by focusing on the relationship between weight and clutter. So she works with clients to eliminate the physical and mental clutter that gets in the way of their physical and mental health. Working on clearing the clutter and the weight means bridging the gap between where a person is and where they want to be. So at Thoughtfully Coaching, the Design Your Health Life strat Strategy includes both getting to the desired outcome and designing an effective maintenance plan for life. So she is here to tell us about losing weight by removing the clutter in your life. I'm so excited about this. So thank welcome, you. Melanie Cohen. Thank so happy you. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. So I love hearing the story about how my speakers got to doing what they're doing. This one's actually very fascinating to me. So can you tell your story, please? I sure can. So first, I have to go back decades um, to tell the story. Um, I was a competitive gymnast growing up um, and with dreams of Olympics and college scholarships, et cetera. I was very talented. Um, I was in great shape. Um, but even being in great shape in a sport like that, um, there is really tragic um, uh, language being used with young girls. Um, I was called fatty. <laughs> I was called piggy. Um, I was called really awful things. And as you can imagine, it creates a really unhealthy relationship with the scale and unhealthy relationship with food. And, um, as a result of the verbal abuse I got, I was done when I was just about 17 years old. So a year away from college, a year away from the Olympics in 1988. And I said, enough is enough. And my parents did not understand until I was in my thirties exactly why I quit because I was not honest and upfront with how I was being spoken to. Cause I knew my parents would pull me out and I was doing what I always dreamed of. Um, so when I quit gymnastics, I gained weight. I gained more weight in college. I gained weight after getting married. I gained weight with each of my children. And I hit 30 and over 200 pounds on the scale. And I didn't know who I was anymore. I, I think because I was always a gymnast, that that identity, once it was gone, I really didn't know how to identify myself. I was a college student and then I was a wife and my job title was my identity. Um, and then mom. And I felt like the word fat came before all of those things. I wasn't a mom. I was a fat mom. I wasn't a wife. I was a fat wife. I wasn't a regional merchandise manager. I was a fat regional merchandise manager. And, and it was at 30 where I said, enough is enough. You know, I, I feel like I wasted my twenties and I want to be proud of who I am, happy and comfortable in my own skin. So I started a weight loss plan. I lost 65 pounds and literally the day I reached my weight goal, I became a weight loss coach, um, which I did for 20 years. And um, last year was the year that I said, let's dig a little deeper on why um, we are challenged with weight. Um, not just, oh, I need to eat this way or drink more water or move more, but rather there's something going on in here if I'm not making all of those things happen. Because I think legitimately and logically, we all know more fruits and vegetables, track what you eat, drink more water, exercise, but that just, it, that knowledge isn't enough. True. Well, I am certainly happy that now you're a weight loss coach and you're here with us. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. So you're here to talk about losing weight by removing the clutter in your life. So what does clutter actually mean? Well, clutter means a lot of different things. Um, there's physical clutter, you know, all the, the tchotchkes and thingamajigs that have been passed on to us um, from family members. It's jewelry, it's clothing, it's photographs. Now it's digital, you know, the amount of emails and documents and photos that we have on our on our computers and, and laptops and phones and tablets. Um, and then I think the most significant clutter is just the emotional clutter. It's the mental clutter. It's the calendar clutter. It's all of the things that we have going on in our life. And once we get overwhelmed by clutter, whether it's the physical clutter in front of us or the mental clutter in our heads, we shut down. 
You know, we just don't feel capable of doing any of it. So why even bother with any of it? And um, for most of us, when we're stressed or overwhelmed, we lean into things that make us feel good, like food. Um, there's mm -hmm. great comfort in that. So just the stress associated with the clutter in our lives, um, we can lead to negative and unwanted behaviors with respect to um, eating. Um, if I've got clutter around me, I don't have room to pull out my yoga mat and exercise. Um, if I'm, I have a cluttered kitchen, I'm less likely to pull out the cutting board and the knife and all of the beautiful fruits and vegetables and prepare them. I'm probably more likely to pick up the phone or open an app and order in. Um, or if I'm bringing food into the house, I'm probably doing a lot of like quick and easy things to make that often are higher in fat, higher in sugar, more highly processed. Um, so clutter can get in our way of, you know, the positive and helpful behaviors we want to see ourselves practicing in addition to the behaviors that the clutter can lead to. Interesting. You got, you just brought up some really good points, mm -hmm. you know, about your environment and how that affects the things that you're doing right. or lack of doing, because that's an excuse to not do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. So how does how does this affect our weight then? Well, um, I think most of us know that stress cortisol levels can create challenges in weight loss in and of itself. You know, right. I could be eating right and I could be moving more and doing all of those things. But if my stress level is high, chances are I'm going to struggle with weight loss. And <laughs> as women over 50, we know that only gets harder. Um, so, you know, the, the hormonal imbalances and the hormonal imbalances created by stress in and of itself can create challenges when it comes to weight loss or more, more importantly, get me to my weight goal and let me maintain that weight. Um, and to make that easier, I need to remove the things in my life that I can control right? Or I can, I need to take action on the things that I have control and the clutter around us is definitely something that we can take control of. So how do we start though? Like, <laughs> well, <how>, yeah. <laughs> There's the question. Yeah. Um, what I didn't mention earlier is that I have two parents who are hoarders. Um, and we've discovered recently that my husband's mother, stepmother and father are all challenged by clutter and, and certainly in ways that um, perhaps they wouldn't make it to any of the hoarders TV shows. However, it's really bad. Um, and it's really bad because I can see it affecting their physical and their mental health. And I know I'm incredibly overwhelmed when I enter at least my mom's home um, that I'm not invited to anymore because she is embarrassed and ashamed of the clutter that she has. And I think, I think that's one of the things about clutter is that it's so similar to weight. It's embarrassing and shaming. And so we don't want to talk about it. Um, so it, it's very easy to hide. And over half of Americans are plagued by challenges with clutter. And again, it doesn't have to be something that other people see. I may have you come over to my house and I'm not you know, embarrassed so much because I've shoved things in a closet and hope that no one tries to open it for you know that old comic of the balls and the baseball bat and the, and the glove oh, yeah. and the coats and everything falling out of it. Um, I, I, I get, again, I think you know the most significant role that clutter plays is, is in our minds. And so different people have different goals when it comes to that. I, I never want someone to think that they need to live a minimal and Spartan life. I'm in my favorite space in my home right now. And some people would see all of those pictures and it seems like a lot, but they're all there. I don't have um, picture frames cluttering, you know, bookshelves and desks and, and, and cabinets and, and armoires and stuff like that. Everything has to start with one small step. I am a huge proponent in not small goals, but what I like to call ridiculously simple goals. Like the goal, like it almost feels ridiculous that I'm saying it out loud, but that simple goal is the one that I'm going to meet and I'm going to meet it quickly and it's going to give me the confidence for the next goal, which then becomes a building block to 
more sophisticated or more intense goals as time goes by. So one of the ways that I like to attack clutter is one 30 day challenge <laughs> on day one, you get rid of one thing. Everyone has something they can get rid of. On day two, two things. On day three, three things. Day 12 can sometimes feel a little overwhelming, or it can also be that moment where we say, oh my God, I'm in this. And um, really quickly be able to dive into whether it's the clothing. And, and for those of us struggled with who struggle with um, weight challenges, Often there's too much clothing and it's in this size and it's in this size and it's in this size and it's in this size. And when we hang on to the big clothes, it's just like an invitation to go back. So getting rid of things can help us feel less cluttered. It can help us gain confidence in the journey that we're on. Um, often when we're getting rid of clothing, the people who end up getting them are people who are in need. So it's like that double good feeling. Um, so when we're decluttering, there are all these amazing emotional benefits to it. I love that. I always look at the removing something from my life to make space for something better to come in. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And you mentioned you have five aging parents between you and your husband yes. and my, my parents have passed, but we cleaned out their house after my dad passed and my sister and I looked at each other and she said, mom said she'd never do this to us, <laughs> but she did. <laughs> I know <laughs> because even though they weren't orders, she still had her quilting room with all of her fabrics, all of her things, all, and she would not go through them before she passed. She would not let me bring them upstairs because she couldn't go up and down the stairs anymore. She didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, it's, it's a lot. Well, the thing really is, you know, for so many of us, the things like represent who we once were and we want to be reminded of. Um, but then we have to ask ourselves the question, like, where does the memory come from? Is the memory in the thing or is the memory within me? And I, that's tough because I think sometimes as we get older and our memory gets bad, we feel like we do need some reminders of, of mm -hmm. things, times past, but nothing that we own is, uh, represents, um, um, you know, like proof that we existed, you know, <laughs> Uh, which is like an epithet and on a, on a gravestone, or it's a photograph, you know, that hundreds of years later, we hope someone says, well, great, 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 great grandma, Melanie, <laughs> you know, was a gymnast or great, 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 great grandma, Melanie was a life coach. Um, I'm not sure there needs to be like objects to represent those things. And I still have a glass dish that belonged to my grandmother, my other grandmother. I have a Yadro piece, but I know a lot of people get a lot of things. And I, <laughs> I promised my kids the same thing your mom promised. And that is, I'm not going to leave you this mess because, but, but what I want them to know is if there is a mess, I don't want them to feel like they have to keep anything because it belongs mm -hmm. I want their memories of me to be whatever they are. And that doesn't have to be represented in a piece of China, a, a piece of crystal, a ring, clothing, or anything else. I want them to remember me in the ways that are impactful to them. Mm -hmm. That is so good. I let all of my children choose the items that they wanted. So that didn't, so things, I have some things, of course, right? But I move around a lot. I'm more of a digital nomad type. So I'm like, okay, what do you want? What do you need to remember them from, you know, right. by? Right. But yeah, but this, you know, carrying this over into the weight loss arena mm -hmm. and managing feelings. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how all of this is connected more than? Oh, sure. Um, yeah. I, I think. Um, so feelings are meant to be managed. We have feelings, mm -hmm. you know, feelings that are up here, you know, the stress and anxiety and frustration. And then we have the, the emotions that are, you know, down low, whether it's, you know, clinical depression or just kind of like the blues that may come and go in time and our feelings have to be managed. 
Mm -hmm. Not controlled, but managed. And, you know, the way feelings get managed are, you know, typically looking for ways to not experience the uncomfortable feelings. We want to experience the better feelings. And so if I'm really stressed or I'm really sad and I'm looking to feel better, whether I'm looking to like um, mellow it out or lift it up. I'm going to go to things that I know make me feel good. And for so many of us, we logically and legitimately know food will make me feel better. I don't care whether it's whether you go to sweets or you go to salty or you go to sweet and salty, that mm -hmm. we go to those things because we know instantly we're going to feel better, even if it's just for a fleeting moment. It may, it may last a fleeting moment. It may last until the food is gone. It may last until we get on the scale the next time. Um, but at some point in time, that thing that made us feel better is only going to make us feel worse. And so if we can find a way to manage those feelings in ways that don't make us feel worse in the end, it is to our benefit. In, in fact, that may mean eating sometimes, but it may mean reaching for an apple as opposed to, you know, chocolate cake. I'll just use chocolate cake to represent all of the things that we think are bad. <laughs> the cake isn't bad, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it can do something wrong. It's how we use it. So, you know, it, even if I have a small piece when I'm experiencing, experiencing an uncomfortable emotion, it may still be a negative and unwanted behavior because I'm choosing food over something healthier, which might be exercise or taking a walk or calling a friend or playing a video game or, you know, picking up a book or journaling. Like we can think of all of these really wonderful things that we can do to provide ourselves with comfort. It's just going to take time to choose those over the food because most of us who are using food to manage our feelings have been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I woke up one day and said, hmm, you know, it'll make me feel better cookies. I was taught that very early on. You fall down. Here's a cookie. Somehow the cookie is going to make you feel better. You know, oh, you got a great report card. Let's celebrate it. You know, let's go out to Carvel or whatever ice, nice. ice near you. So, so this negative and unwanted behavior of utilizing food as a way to manage our feelings is something that's been going on for a long time. So just like um, um, decluttering, we need to be willing to take it in baby steps going towards, you know, better behaviors. If I can choose something other than food most of the time, then I will have been successful. And I think that's another piece. I talk about very small, like ridiculously simple goals. And I'm also a firm believer in the things that we do most of the time will make us successful, not all of the time. Mm, that's true. And taking it step by step, because mm -hmm. if, if I look at, say, my living my, my place. Okay. My house. And I'm like, Oh, I don't even want to start, you know, like, where do I even start? Mm -hmm. Like, how do I organize my life so that I can clear off a counter to, to chop vegetables or right. don't feel like I have to just call Uber Eats. Right. But it's, it's one step at a time. And, and one uh -huh. step could be, um, one shelf. It could be one drawer. Uh -huh. It could be one surface, or it could be a portion of one of those things. It could be half a shelf. It could be half a drawer. It could be half a sur uh, surface. And I think that's why so many of us end up with such significant levels of clutter. And it's because we think we have to do it all. And, you know, if I can't do it all, why bother even trying? Well, if that, if, if it's because I think I have to clean the whole closet, as opposed to a shelf in the closet. Of course, I'm going to postpone that. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the wherewithal. It stresses me out. And so it would just be easier to do nothing because that would actually be more comforting than addressing something that looks really scary and overwhelming. So if I can just pick that one thing, it's it's one of the reasons, um, I don't know if, if I had mentioned it before, but I like to do a 30-day challenge that involves getting rid of one thing a day, but adding another thing each day. So if it on day one, day 12, day 19, by day 30, I've gotten rid of over 450 things. Wow. 
But if I told you I need to get rid of 450 things, I'd be like, eh, forget about it. Screw it. I'm not going to do it. That's too, that's too scary. Yeah. But if I just start with one. Two doesn't seem so impossible. Three is certainly something I can do. Six, I might even be in, in motion where I start seeing such significant benefits that I'm willing to get rid of more than I perhaps had even planned on. Mm -hmm. You made it more fun so that I'm not going to postpone it and procrastinate because it's looking so overwhelming to me. Right. So you, you've turned it into a fun way to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely, And you yeah. can, and you can make it a game, uh -huh. you know, if you live with uh -huh. someone else, you can, you know, see who could last the longest, like who, you know, maybe we don't make it to day 30. If we only make it to day 19, oh no, only day 19, we've still gotten rid of a couple hundred uh, items. Um, and so, you know, 30 day challenge is certainly a way to start, but if you know, you're doing it against somebody else, it may motivate uh -huh. you to go a little long and it doesn't have to be someone you live with. It can be, you know, your sister across the country or, or your best friend around the corner. Um, and then following up with people and seeing how they're doing can also help you feel supported, um, in the mm -hmm. process. Maybe oh, there's so guys, you know, like whoever yeah. makes it the longest gets a dinner on the other person. Sounds like a fun challenge. So thank you for sharing all of that wisdom with us. So you have a free ebook for the viewers, Embarking on a Journey over and over and over and over again ebook. So it's called My Path to Weight Loss and a Clutter-Free Life. Can you tell us about your ebook? Well, the over and over and over and over again, I think references how <laughs> many of us have done every diet under the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've tried to clean up the house a thousand times. Um, but we keep starting again. And I think part of the reason we keep starting over again is that it's not, we, we don't, we don't find ourselves comfortable with doing anything less than the whole thing. You know, whether it's, I'm going to, I lost 65 pounds. I did not lose it overnight. It took me 18 months to lose 65 pounds. Now I think that's amazing because it's almost 25 years since I started that journey. But while I was going through it, it was taking forever. And uh -huh. how many times on that journey I had quit before that if I didn't lose as much weight as I thought I should lose in 30 days, I gave up as opposed to knowing that, you know, it, it's not a linear path. There are going to be ups and downs. It's like riding a roller coaster. Um, and so I think it's really important to address any aspect of the weight loss journey, whether it's um, mindset related food, activity, drinking water, that all of those things are things that we need to do consistently most of the time in order to stay with it, as opposed to, there I go, it's Thanksgiving, I give up, I'll start again in January, and then January 3rd, January 4th, January 9th, and then we finally start doing it, but somehow we missed out on that perfect opportunity to get started, and February rolls around and I've quit again, as opposed to just looking at it um, as a path that we're on. Sometimes it's scenic, and sometimes it's direct, but the implication that I keep falling off huh? means I have to get back on as opposed to, well, I ate a lot on Thanksgiving and it was lovely uh -huh. and it was wonderful. And then Friday was a different day as opposed to the, I'm off and on the trend again. Awesome. I love that. Cause we do want it overnight, don't we? We want it like now we, you know, we didn't get here overnight. We didn't like, our houses didn't get that way overnight either if we have exactly. a lot of clutter. So mm -hmm. it was years in the making. So unfortunately, so you also have a bonus for the viewers that purchased the VIP all access pass. So mm -hmm. it is it valued at $47. So it's the 30 day decluttering and weight loss challenge. <laughs> so it goes back to that, you know, what can I do for 30 days? Um, mm -hmm. And included in that also is, 30 days of tracking what you eat, 30 days of incorporating more water into your life and 30 days of incorporating more activity in your life. 
I don't propose that anybody is going to do this for 30 days and lose 30 fat and 30 pounds, but rather be on the path to this more um, simple way of living on the path of losing weight on the path of becoming more organized. Or I, 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 let me rephrase that. We don't get organized. First, we got to get rid of the stuff. Then we can get organized. And I think that's something that also gets in people's way is they're constantly organizing things. But if you're organizing the things that you need to get rid of, then of course it's going to be overwhelming because you can't keep re um, reorganizing the same things over and over again. Um, and so that first 30 days is really about implementing these habits um, in these four areas and then growing from there. I love that because if you just keep moving things around, you know, <laughs> So any last piece of advice or actionable step you'd love to leave the viewers with today? Um, I think I said it already, but but I okay. will reiterate it. And, and it's that idea of slow, steady, and simple. I, if, if I could get everybody to talk about the ridiculously simple goals that they've set, then people would be reaching these goals, you know? Um, and then being able to talk back about like, well, I did this little thing and I did that little thing and then I did this little thing and no longer does it feel little, it feels really big. As opposed to the other way around with trying to do something really big and maybe only doing a little bit of it, but somehow only doing a little bit is this perceived failure as opposed to if I set small, ridiculously simple, laughably simple goals, it will in a very short period of time feel big as opposed to feeling little. I love how you just said that. So I'm glad that we came back to it. So for those of you tuning in, check out Melanie's free ebook, Embarking on a Journey over and over and over and over again. It's her ebook, My Path to Weight Loss and a Clutter-Free Life. The link is below the video along with her website, her social medias. And then if you purchase the VIP All Access Pass, you get her bonus valued at $47, the 30-day decluttering and weight loss challenge, and you get all of the other uh, speaker bonuses as well. So be sure to tune back in for the rest of our Weight Loss for Women Over 50 Masterclass series. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Melanie Cohen. So nice to have you here. Sherry, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. 